Hello, today we're going to look at Hubble's constant, the Big Bang Theory and the age of the universe. This will be a precursor for videos on where matter, particles and energy come from. When Einstein was developing his theory on relativity, he wanted a theory on the whole universe. And the astronomers at the time were telling him that the galaxies in the universe were fixed and unchanging. The universe neither had a beginning nor an end. It was and ever had been. There might be some local movement, but generally the universe was in a fixed place and had ever been there. No beginning, no end. But Einstein knew that the only force that would apply to a universal frame was the force of gravity. It's true that the electromagnetic force also applies universally, but galaxies aren't charged, so there wouldn't be a electromagnetic force between them. So the only force that he knew of was the force of gravity. And gravity tends to attract, so all of the universe should contract as gravity pulled all the galaxies together. But since the astronomers were telling him that the universe was fixed and unchanging, he assumed that there must be another force, which he called the universal constant, which as it were, was balancing gravity and holding the universe as fixed and constant. Then along came the physicist and astronomer Edwin Hubble. He was studying the spectra in stars and galaxies. Stars are made out of hydrogen. Indeed, stars convert hydrogen to helium throughout their lifetime. If you do an experiment in the laboratory where you take a glass tube, evacuate it, take all the air out, put a small amount of hydrogen in and have two electrodes, pass a very high current, you will find that there will be a glow. The gas in the tube starts to glow. And if you pass that light through a prism, the prism splits the light into its constituent colours. Hydrogen has a very explicit spectrum, which is shown here. Four clear lines, a red line, a green line, a blue line, and a violet line. When Hubble looked at the spectrum from stars, he found that if this was the four lines for hydrogen in a laboratory, then if he looked at one star, he would find that the lines were there, but slightly shifted to the right. And if he looked at another star, the lines would all be there, but perhaps shifted slightly more to the right. Hubble explained this by what is known as the Doppler effect. We've all experienced the Doppler effect. For example, when a police car comes down a road, initially it's traveling towards you, and then it's traveling away. And the sound will sound like this. Da 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 da. The pitch changes depending on whether the car is coming towards you or going away. If it's coming towards, there's a higher pitch. If it's going away, there's a lower pitch. The pitch is determined by the frequency of the sound. It's a lower frequency if it's going away, and it's a higher frequency if it's coming towards you. The reason is that if the car is traveling towards you, then the waves, which might normally look like this, will be bunched up. They are shorter wavelength, but higher frequency. On the other hand, if the car is traveling away from you, the waves, which again might normally look like this, are in fact lengthened. And they get a longer wavelength and a lower frequency. So too with light. A light source moving away from you will show a lower frequency. The light source moving towards you will show a higher frequency. Now, blue light has a higher frequency than red light. So if a light source has a lower frequency, in other words, it's going away from you, then it will shift towards the red end. We call that a red shift. 
If on the other hand the light source is coming towards you, its frequency will increase and it will shift towards the blue end and we call that a blue shift. And you can calculate the velocity of the object if you know the frequency shift. The velocity is proportional to the shift in the frequency. And it's also the case that the bigger the frequency difference, the greater the velocity. Hubble was able therefore to calculate the velocity of these gal galaxies by their shift. Hubble noticed that nearly all galaxies were showing a red shift. And that means that they were moving away. And if that's the case, Hubble deduced that the universe was expanding. Because if something is this far away, this is me, this is an object X, if it's that far away from me today, then yesterday it was a bit closer and tomorrow it will be a bit further away. It's moving in that direction and therefore the whole thing is expanding.